Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be making some of these motor adapter plates. They're going to be a different version of this. Normally, I would 3D print this or use a laser cutter to cut them out of acrylic just to kind of test the fit. But for these purposes, they absolutely need to be made out of metal. So I've got this um, sheet of eighth inch aluminum. I think it's 6061. I'm going to glue this down to the bed and we're going to cut out some new versions. And I'm going to show you what slotting looks like on the Avid CNC router. Let's go take a look. So let's first start out by looking at the actual part. Here it is. I'm not really going to go into too much of the design. So let's look at the job. And you can see I don't really have anything special for this. I just have the um, Z on top of the material. And then I've got um, everything else pretty much just set to stock. It doesn't really matter with the extra stock to leave, things like that. So then let's look at this first operation, which is a contour. I'm using a quarter inch single flute end mill. I actually don't have the single flute in there, but I'm using 15,000 RPM. Cut rate of 50 inches per minute. That gives me, um, what, 1.1 thou um, inch per tooth. And then 50 lead in, 50 um, lead out, and then a 30 plunge. So if I go over here, this is where I'm defining all of my contours. So I'm going on the outside, all of the holes, the middle one. I'm not doing any of the um, drill holes yet. We'll do those later in another operation. And then um, I'm going down 10 thou below um, the bottom just to make sure that I cut all the way through. That's what that is right down there. And if we go over to this tab, you can see I have stock to leave. I'm leaving um, two and a half thou just on the outside because I'll come back and clean that up after everything is done. And then lastly, on this last tab, which is the linking tab, you can see that I have ramp selected. I've got a two degree ramp and I just left everything else as the defaults. So if we click OK, um, you can see that it is basically going to be ramping down into all of these contours and then going across. So if we do simulate, show stock, play, you can see exactly what's going on here. I'll speed it up a little bit. And no toolpath. So you see we're ramping down and then cutting the full profile. Pretty simple stuff. And this whole operation is about eh, two minutes or so. And then on the second contour, I basically just copied this one, pasted it into a new one. So I have all the um, same contours selected. I slowed this down just a tiny bit, 30 inch per minute feed rate. This is arbitrary. I'm just kind of going for a you know good surface finish. That's really the only reason for that. Um, still have the same negative 10 thou stock to leave or bottom contour. So it'll cut slightly below this bottom level and then no stock to leave because we're actually doing the finish contour and then no ramping because that's not really necessary. So this one just simply goes around and cuts. So boom, cuts the outside, cuts the insides, and that is it. And this is only like eh, about a minute. And then after all this is said and done, we're gonna do the four mounting holes. For the tool, we're just using an eighth inch um, drill because well, that's just easy and I have a bunch of them. These are all just preset um, settings that were in here. I did change the plunge to 15 inches per minute, um, but the speed came up as the default. And then I have it drill through the bottom and I have an extra 10 thou. Um, the interesting thing about the break through the bottom is you got to put this as a positive number. If it's a negative, it will go above the hole. So kind of reverse from all the other conventions. And then I am using a partial retract. And the partial retract, let me show you what that looks like. It just kind of pecks inside the hole. So we go down, peck a little bit, come up. Eh, it's kind of hard to see. Let me play it. So it's going to kind of go down a little bit, come up, go down, come up, go down. And it just sits there and kind of pecks up and down inside the hole until it gets all the way through. And because the spindle has such a high RPM, you're gonna to wanna to use one of these um, pecking cycles. And it's just chip breaking, par chip breaking partial retract is what I use, and I just use all the standard settings. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Let's um, get this mounted on the machine. For work holding, I'm using the good old classic painter's tape and super glue trick. 
Um, I just have a piece of MDF kind of clamped down to the front of the table. I just like using the front of the table because it's just closer. So I have that clamped down. I'm just covering it in some blue painter's tape. And then when I get that all nice and pretty and tidy, I'll do the same thing on the workpiece, and then you slather some super glue in between them, and that will hold it together. So you're using the adhesive on the painter's tape and the super glue as an adhesive, and that kind of holds everything together. Now, pro tip, if you're doing this method, make sure you find your good bottle of super glue. I went through three different bottles of super glue before I found one that actually had something in it and wasn't all crusted up. So just, you know, a little tip to remember. I used a 1, 2, 3 block to set the Z height. The X and the Y coordinates really don't matter that much. I just need to make sure that I'm cutting on the actual aluminum, but there's no real centering or indicating that needs to happen. So that's all pretty easy. So unfortunately, these cuts are not going to look all that interesting because I've got the dust shoe on there. I always use the dust shoe because this thing will throw metal chips 10, 20 feet in every direction and I will be cleaning them up for months. I've said it before, I like you guys a lot, but I'm going to use the dust shoe for pretty much all of my cuts. Um, but everything went perfectly fine, I didn't hear any chunks, I didn't hear anything weird happening under there. Um, it just cut without an issue and it was over in a couple minutes. Drilling the four holes was really uneventful. I just swapped out the end mill to the drill bit, used the one, two, three block again, and it took, I don't know, 30 seconds, maybe a minute to drill the four holes. And um, yeah, just use a little deburring tool, deburred them a little bit, and they were good to go. For oddly shaped parts like this, it can be a little tricky to actually remove it from the tape but thankfully heat gun works out pretty well. Just heat it a little bit, the adhesive will soften quite a bit, and then you can just pry it right off. This is something to keep in mind when using this work holding method though. If you impart too much heat on the thing that you're cutting, it will start to loosen all on its own and that is a bad time. So you need to make sure that you have your feeds and speeds correct, you're using coolant if needed, and you keep that part really cool because as soon as it starts to heat up, it will start to shift around on you. And here are the two finished mounts. Um, edge quality is good, um, as you would expect from a CNC router. Nothing too crazy, but really nice nonetheless. A lot of people ask me, you know, the capabilities of aluminum cutting on the Avid CNC router, and here you go. Uh, this is a great application. This is where the machine is really going to excel and do a great job. These parts took about three minutes to make. Obviously I had to make the video and set everything up, blah, blah, blah. But the actual cutting time was only about three minutes. You could probably do two of them in like five, six minutes, something like that. So this is pretty rapid prototyping. This is about as quick as um, setting up the laser cutter and um, cutting these out of acrylic. So overall pretty happy with the machine for this type of an application. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Um, after the credits on this video, I just have um, this cutting of the second one so you can kind of see what this looks like in real time. But as always, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below. I'm always happy to show you what the machine can do. And um, yeah, check out my Facebook page for any updates to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.